Someone a couple of days ago posted an article titled Silver Isn't Scarce, mentioning that everyone's wrong and that silver is plentiful. Well, guy, let me read you something. Record global silver demand and a lack of supply upside contributed to last year's 237.7 million ounce market deficit. It was the second consecutive annual deficit in a row. The Silver Institute called it possibly the most significant deficit on record. It also noted that the combined shortfalls of the previous two years comfortably offset the cumulative surpluses of the last 11 years. The bottom line is that silver is rare in both absolute terms and in relation to demand for the metal. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, so now let's talk silver. Folks, a couple days ago, an article came out. It, it didn't piss me off, but it definitely irritated me because they were spreading misinformation, fitting their own narrative to push something, and it was all just BS, right? Ulterior motives, usually pushing something like, um, let's say, stocks or something is pegged to the dollar. They try to downplay precious metals. Well, they made a, uh, they posted an article talking about how silver isn't scarce, mentioning that it's just, you know, this is a myth. Well, I didn't cover this article like I usually would, but I'm, I'm tired of spreading misinformation even if I'm debunking it. I just, I didn't want to give this person credit or show anything of that nature on my channel, so I ignored it. Well, today Shift Gold came out debunking this exact article, saying silver isn't scarce in other myths, saying that that article is a myth. They go over the fact that silver is scarce. We'll start off with this first statement, silver isn't rare. Then he goes on to say, but it is. I'm glad that someone else saw this and had the due diligence to say this is all BS because numbers don't lie, the data doesn't lie, right? But, but you can speculate and throw your opinion out there all you want with no evidence backing it up. Well, guess what? The Silver Institute, which I say is the holy grail of information when you're looking at numbers, supply, demand, all that stuff. They said that we had record-breaking supply deficits this year. Even mints are coming out and saying there's a silver shortage. The LBMA, the LME, and the COMEX, the biggest exchanges in the world, came out publicly and said there is a shortage. When you look forwards, it is blatantly obvious we don't have enough silver. Even saying, a lot have said, even scientists say silver will be the first metal to become extinct. This stuff isn't speculation, it's not opinion, it's not myth, it's not a conspiracy. We have data proving this. But if someone doesn't watch my channels or know that or look at the Silver Institute or look at any of this, they're just going to read that one guy's article and say, oh, wow, so silver isn't scarce, so I'm going to stay away from it because, you know, low supply, high demand pushes the price up. But with something with a high supply, it, regardless of demand, it's not going to do much. Kind of like gold, even though gold is valuable compared to something else, though, right? Gold isn't scarce. That's why there, there's no premiums on gold, right? Look at gold's premiums. Gold, you could buy for near spot price, not so much silver. But anyways, before we go into this article, debunking that other article talking about how silver is scarce from shiftgold.com, I wanted to mention I'm doing a huge silver giveaway so if you want a chance to win an entire tube of silver eagles sealed tight never been opened still has the the seal on it also 10 other semi numismatic coins like some older pandas maybe even throwing a slab coin who knows uh, but all you got to do is click one button that button is subscribe and then go enter the entry video is live may the luckiest stacker win also, if you wanted to buy some of this shiny stuff, I recommend purchasing through Miles Franklin. Just send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. That link is also in the description of the pinned comment. Um, so, silver isn't scarce and other myths. And I'm curious to see what the other myths are as well. I didn't read on because I want to share this information live with you guys so you guys can see my reaction as well. A commentator on the Shift Gold Facebook page recently asserted that silver coins are junk. The gold to silver ratio investment premise is obsolete in this industrial computerized and AI world. Now, let me stop right here. They just contradicted themselves. Silver is used in everything. 
even in the medical world. It's used for space equipment, dental alloys. It's used in computers, solar panels, electric vehicles, uh, 5G towers, things that are going to be exploding in demand over the next decade, like electric vehicles, like solar panels, like 5G towers, and many other new inventions. Since silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity and ele uh, uh, electricity and light sensitivity. So first, they just they just contradict themselves. But secondly, when you look at something like silver, you have to look at the other variables. Silver is a byproduct. There's only so much silver in the Earth's crust. Most silver is going to be thrown away in landfills, never to be recycled. Even if that silver was recycled, it, that's going to recycling will put a small dent in it because we cannot reuse. All that silver. There's 500 ounces of silver in a single Tomahawk missile. And imagine if the gold, if if silver's demand exceeded 1.21 billion ounces this year, and we're only producing around 850 million ounces. Imagine how many billions of ounces the demand will be in 2027 by 2030, and we can only dig up 850 million ounces. You know, give or take. If you want to add recycling or mining innovation, I mean, it's not realistic. It's not. So for, to sit here and say junk silver is called junk because it's not rare, uh, go, try to, uh, go try to go coin roll hunting and see how many walking liberties or mercury dimes or barber dimes or barber quarters you're going to find. It's very hard when you incorporate all the people that are holding silver, not reselling it. That's even a stronger case. Or if you want to take it even a step further, when you look at silver being found by accident, when they're looking for gold, lead, or zinc, nobody is scrapping this silver. There's very few focal silver mines because people are looking for gold. If they find some silver, they'll take it, but they're not looking for it. So when you try to make this case, you have to look at all these other factors beyond just your assumption that oh, it's just a myth. So he goes on to say, what should we make of these assertions? We'll start with the first statement, silver isn't rare, but it is. Of course, rare is a relative term. Silver is relatively abundant compared to gold, but it is extremely rare compared to copper. About 1.5 million tons of silver have been mined in history compared to 700 million tons of copper. And copper is rare compared to iron which is over 3 billion tons of iron have been mined. Silver is also becoming increasingly rare based on demand. There was record-breaking supply deficits this year, hundreds of millions of ounces in the red. And I'm sure over the next decade, that record will be broken several times. There's no way we're going to produce billion-plus ounces in one year especially given the, the fact that most of that silver that's, that's dug up is going to be thrown away within a couple of decades, where gold stays in circulation for a century because people are, since gold is used for coins and jewelry and bars more than electronics, that gold is sold to a pawn shop and then recycled or, you know, when it's passed down or a ring or whatever it is, it gets remelted into more gold and more jewelry and necklaces and coins and earrings. And that's this that, that, that cycle stays flowing where silver is thrown thrown away in a, uh, in a laptop and never recycled just sitting there so yes the ratio is seven to one coming out of the earth's crust but when you look at it from that way it's much smaller than seven to one so let's let's keep moving on silver is also becoming increasingly rare based on demand there has been a market deficit over the last two years, and that is expected to increase. In fact, one study estimates the solar energy sector alone will require over 20% of the current annual silver supply by 2027. And by 2050, solar panel productions will uh, use approximately 85 to 98% of the global, uh, current global silver reserves. Silver supply is already constrained. Record global silver demand and a lack of supply upside contributed to last year's 237.7 million ounce market de uh, deficit. 237 million ounces in the red. It was the second consecutive annual deficit in a row. The Silver Institute called it possibly the most significant deficit on record. It's also noted that 
the combined shortfalls of the previous two years comfortably offset the cumulative surpluses over the last 11 years, right? So even though we were going positive, uh, catching up, that just off offset all of the 11 years of, uh, of in the green to now nothing. The bottom line is that silver is rare in both absolute terms and in relation to demand for the metal. But what about the gold to silver ratio? Is this an outmoded investment metric? The short answer is no. We could debate whether the historic silver to gold ratio is overstated in a 21st century context, but the fact remains that silver has generally tracked with gold over time. That's why investors followed the movements of the gold to silver ratio and have for decades. Gold bull markets pull silver up with them, and silver has actually historically outperformed gold during those runs. This pandemic provides the most recent example. The current ratio stands around 82 to 1. That means it takes 82 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. To put the current ratio in perspective, the average in, in the modern era has been 40 to 1, 50 to 1. And actually, if you want to go back really far, it was 8 to 1 for thousands of years and 16 to 1 until 1930 where FDR got in office and changed it from 16 to 1 to 75 to 1, basically overnight. And that's also, you know, what happened when he, you know, that, that, that falls into the executive order 6102, where he banned gold. He said, if you have gold, that's no longer yours. It's owned by the Federal Reserve. And if you don't turn it in, if we find out you're, you're, you're hoarding some of that yellow stuff, you're going to pay a $10,000 fine or 10 years in prison or both. That was a real thing that happened in 1933. That's real. So, if you want even more context to this situation, even earlier, ancient biblical days, it was two and a half to one. Two and a half part silver equals one part gold. That was the earliest ratio. Some say it was even one to one before that. But Regardless, silver is going to be used forever. Nothing can replace silver. Copper would be a closest second in terms of electrical conductivity, but you already saw it, it, the, the quality wouldn't even be worth it. Not even close. Um, so silver is unique. It's magical. It's more useful than any other metal by far, but it's also the most scarce. So you could see a situation how devastating this could be since we're trying to go green so we could push zero net emissions by the year 2040 or 2050 and also global warming global warming and climate change but if we don't have enough silver for that to happen then uh you know you can see how 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 serious this situation could be but also how valuable silver is the ratio fell 30 to 1 in 2011, and that's when silver was $50, and 20 to 1 in 1979, when silver was also $50. More recently, it dropped into the 60 to 1 neighborhood during Gold's bull run in the midst of lockdowns. When the spread gets as wide as it currently is, silver typically doesn't just outperform goals. Uh, gold, it goes on massive runs in a short period of time. You know, it, it outperforms gold. People call it, um, you know, uh, the devil's metal because it is riskier. But I, I call it gold on steroids since it hits higher highs and lower lows. Silver typically doesn't just outperform gold. It goes on a massive run in a short period of time. Meaning you could profit, but you could also lose a lot of money. Why they call it the devil's metal as well. Because if you get too greedy or, or if you panic sell, you could very much lose a lot more than you would with gold. If gold's going to rise 10%, silver's going to rise 15%. But if gold drops 10%, silver's going to drop 15%. And you can see why, if you have weak hands, that could be a problem. Calling the gold to silver ratio irrelevant simply doesn't stand up in the face of recent historical evidence. Our intrepid Facebook commenter, the guy that said that silver isn't or, or silver isn't scarce recommends buying numismatic coins with specific dates he wasn't kind enough to reveal what dates i should be looking for of course i wish him luck i hope he realizes that he's paying extremely high premiums in the hope that somebody will want to buy his collectible coin in the future sure he may luck into a coin that makes him rich and I might find gold lying on the beach. It's more likely that he'll end up stuck with a collectible coin nobody wants to buy at the price he paid for. That's so important. 
you could have you could say a coin is worth five thousand dollars but if nobody's willing to pay five thousand dollars for that coin is that coin really worth five thousand dollars no and it doesn't even matter about it we're investing because silver is so useful that's why we say stack weight if you want to branch off and buy coins that are detached from spot price like collectible coins then do that but not until you already have weight because we're investing in the silver for the 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 the, the critical use it has in the world pushing forwards the supply and demand ratio low supply high demand pushes the price up it's more about the one ounce inside of it not the price tag and once you realize that you become a true silver stacker no matter who says that one ounce coin is worth what is irrelevant because the coin's value is the one ounce inside of it not the price tag the price tag is irrelevant spot price is irrelevant because that's that's a moving variable that is not consistent the dollar's lost 98 percent of its original purchasing power 98 percent but silver is always one ounce one ounce of silver is always going to be one ounce of silver. So he goes in why bullion coins such as American Eagles, Canadian Maple Leafs might not be so much appealing. There will always be a market for these coins, right? Liquid. Liquidity is key. And since they are valued based on the metal itself, not some arbitrary subjective standard set by collectors, you know, know exactly what they're worth. Investing in silver might not be for everybody, but if you're foolish to spurn the white metal due to baseless assertions. That's so important. I'm glad this this article came out because you can see why you can see why it's so important for the work that I do or Andy Sheckman or David Morgan or Ted Butler or Keith Newmeyer or Mike Maloney or, you know, I could name a handful or more than a handful. That's why these people are so important because we're pushing we're pushing the truth when people who are pushing other narratives are trying to Bury the truth. And uh, and even more so, not this guy, because it looks like he still does buy coins. A lot of times, these guys don't even invest in the silver or gold. They try to say it's it's worthless so they can push stocks on you or something that's pegged to the dollar. And that's downright evil that you know gold and silver is valuable, but you don't want people pushing that because gold and silver is a direct threat to the dollar. And you want people to, to invest into something that you have or, or that you're uh, promoting, then you're just misleading people. At least be honest, right? So anyways, um, silver makes the most sense by far, and I'm glad that Shift Gold uh, shared this information. Because when I saw that article the other day, it, it didn't make me mad. I just I just couldn't share shed light. A lot of times I will do that. I will just rip a, an article to pieces. I will destroy it. And it's always misleading context or misleading, you know, uh, and, and leaving out context. They won't mention the record breaking supply deficits. They won't mention any of the stuff that matters. They won't show the numbers. They'll just share their opinion as fact. And if someone isn't educated or doesn't watch my channel, they will believe that and think silver isn't scarce and that I'm just sitting here lying, right? Silver Slayer's lying. I can still buy silver on Atmex right now. There's no silver shortage. <laughs> it's much, it's much more deep than just being able to buy silver on Atmex right now. It's much more deep than that, and it's much more devastating when you look at the reality that we really don't have enough silver to go green. Anyways, though, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. If you want a chance to win some silver, go enter in the entry video. Like I said, if you want to purchase some silver, hit up Miles Franklin. They got you. You could spend a million dollars. You could spend a hundred million dollars. You can spend one dollar. Well, not one dollar. You could spend twenty dollars if you want. Right? You can spend any amount. They have great prices. Very respected. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Just go on your Gmail or whatever, info at milesfranklin.com. Let them, or, or ask them, what, what's the price you? Do they have any specials, any discounts? Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy Sheckman loves this community, loves my audience. That's why he spends so much time, you know, giving you guys uh, behind the scenes information that you can't find anywhere else since he is still working with the U.S. Mint. 
Um, and it's like buying from your friend compared to buying from some random person online. You don't know who's behind that screen getting your personal information or filling that order. But if with, with Miles Franklin, you do know. And if there was a problem, just email me and I could put you in direct contact with him. You know, if some, let's say something bad happened. Send me an email, info at Silver Slayer, and I will call Andy directly, right, and say, hey, this person, give him your information. I mean, it, it, there's no, nothing better than that. And he has, he is the most like, influential person right now, for sure, since he exposed the Brick Nations. Um, but he also has connections. He filled that $50 million order from that billionaire from Texas. He filled that order in two days. 900,000 eagles, over 100,000 ounces in junk silver, which imagine how hard it was to pull that off, let alone 900,000 eagles, and gold as well. Nobody else in this world could pull that much, could, could fill that order in two days. Nobody could. But Andy has so many different connections, he was able to. Uh, and since we're talking about silver being harder and harder to find, a lot of these people, especially they can't go through the U.S. Mint, they have to go through a middleman, which means they have to raise prices. And, uh, you know, like Andy always, sh always says, relationships are critical, especially moving forwards, and you could build a business relationship with them. And I'm, I'm honored to be able to offer you guys that. I truly am. It's so cool. Uh, so anyways, you know, because I get, I get people asking me all the time, and I'm like, I want to stay loyal to Andy. I want to stay loyal to Miles Franklin because it's more than just promoting some random site. It's me sharing, giving you guys an opportunity with someone that I talk to regularly, almost every day, that is very respected, been in the game for decades. Uh, it, it, it's incredible. So anyways, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this video. Uh, this was Silver Slayer. I will see you guys tomorrow. Post daily videos. With that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.